The big political story this week, of course, is the shutdown of the United States federal government. And for those who might be viewing this in another country, let me explain what's going on. In the United States right now, our Congress is broken into two main parties, the Republican and the Democratic Party. Unlike many nations that have multiple political parties, in the United States we primarily have two political parties, the Republicans and the Democrats. And right now they're at odds with each other fighting over the budget. And so there's all kinds of political strategy going on, certainly as this plays out. But consequently what's happened is the federal government has had to shut down, meaning that any non-essential service has had to close. So things like our Parks and Recreation Department, our Agricultural Department, things like that that are deemed non-essential are currently closed until Congress can find the appropriate funding for them. In the meantime, you know, the Republican Party is blaming the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party is blaming the Republican Party for this uh, shutdown, and there's all kinds of political ramifications for all involved. And certainly our news media is not lacking for any coverage of this situation at all. But what I haven't seen is a Catholic perspective on this, so I want to talk about what our faith calls us to do. One of the first things that we have to note is our faith calls us to be active in our political processes. So it calls us as citizens to participate not only in voting, but also in contacting our congressmen, our elected officials, to let them know our concerns and our thoughts on various political situations. So certainly we have that obligation and certainly we should take that seriously. And I'm not going to advocate to support one party or another because none of these things that they're arguing over, um, that I can tell at least, involves something that would be truth with a capital T. It would be things of, you know, what do you think is the best practice? Uh, how do you think we should fund things? What should and should not be included in the federal budget? So those are all different types of questions. But I do think there are some issues that do affect Catholics. And I want to talk about those because there are a lot of the issues that aren't being reported. And namely, that's as this continued shutdown progresses, if it's not resolved soon, the people who are going to be victimized most by this are the people who are always victimized, namely the, the poor and the marginalized, those who are already poor and marginalized. Um, one of our deacons, I was talking with him, he's on the board of a ministry uh, here in the county in which I live, and this ministry provides food assistance to many people in low-income situations. And he told me that yesterday there was an uptick in the number of people taking advantage of their services. And I don't mean taking advantage, I'm using their services because of the fact that they're concerned about food stamps and whether these are going to continue or not. They're funded through the month of October, but beyond that, um, there's question as to whether or not people will be able to receive food stamps and the assistance that they're used to receiving. Now, certainly we can have debates about what type of funding the government should or should not do, but that's secondary. The point that I want to make is that as Christians, when we see people starving or in need for basic necessities, we have a moral obligation to assist them. Blessed Pope John Paul II articulated this actually when he spoke about feeding tubes. When he talked about feeding tubes, he said that this is not considered an extraordinary means uh, to help somebody live. He said it's considered providing basic sustenance, and to that we all have a moral obligation to help somebody. And so since we have this moral obligation to help people with their basic sustenance, so things like food, clothing, shelter, um, we as Catholics, when we see this type of a situation and understand that there are people in our society who are going to be struggling as a result of this shutdown, and not just the people who are temporarily out of work while the government is trying to get its act together, but those who depend on the government for certain types of assistance, it becomes incumbent upon us to reach out to our brothers and sisters and to help them. I worked at a soup kitchen for a year in Brooklyn, and one of the things I can state uh, that happens in these types of um, nonprofit agencies is that a lot of funding comes in in the month of December because people are giving as part of tax incentives, and also people tend to be in a giving mood as part of the Christmas holidays and things like that. But what happens is, over the summer months, almost no money comes in. And so you begin to run on empty, so to speak. And the worst thing to have happen when you're running on empty is to have a surge of people who need your assistance because there's so little to go around to begin with. So as Catholics, I think it's important for us to look not only to the political realm and see what's going on and express our opinions, uh, whether it's pleasure or displeasure to our elected officials, but it's also important for us to look around and say, who's hurting from these decisions and how can we help them? See, that's what living the gospel is. It's about affirming life. You know, this is respect month life in the Catholic Church. So we're supposed to be 
really focusing on how can we affirm human life. One of the ways we do that is ensure that every human being is treated with dignity, including the poor. And so those who can't meet their basic needs need to be given dignity by us helping them to meet those basic needs. We need to empower them to do so. And in some cases, we have to help them to do so. And in doing so, we're actually living out that gospel message that was given to us by Christ. So as Catholics, I think as the government remains shut down, we should certainly look, like I said, to the political landscape, express our opinions there, but also act upon the morals that tell us that we need to look for those who are being hurt and victimized and say, How can I help? In this way, we truly will spread the gospel of life.